Hey, what's going on everyone? Dominic the Primetime Treasure Hunter here. We're going to do another store review today. If you haven't seen these in the past, it's based on a message that I sent out to members of my Facebook group, the Facebook Reselling Resource Center, in which I let people know if you're struggling with slow sales, you feel like you've uh, done everything you could think of, you just can't figure out what the problem is, then send me an email with your store name in it and I will do a review for you here for free on the channel. Just let me share your first name with the viewers. And a bunch of people took me up on that and I still have a backlog I'm working through so I'm asking people not to send me any new ones right now. But if you want to see the prior ones that I've done, just go to the playlist section right there and uh, just click on the one that says store reviews. It'll open up and you can see the other ones that I've done. Uh, and also, by the way, go check out all the other content that I have here on the channel. I have over 600 videos. They're all free. If you enjoy it, just hit the like button. Make sure that you subscribe uh, to the channel and hit this bell icon up top for notifications such as when I go uh, live. Anyway, um, let's talk about the uh, message that I wound up getting from uh, Andrew. And uh, Andrew uh, said to me, and let's just uh, expand it out uh, right here, he says, uh, hello, my name is Andrew. Of course, I live in Southern California and I'm 27 years old. I've been selling on eBay since 2011, but started doing it full time while going to school in December 2017. Great. Uh, he says, I have three eBay stores, two of which are mine, and one is my mom's. Now, I'm going to review the two that are Andrew's. The one that's his mom's, I'm going to send him a message, ask him if she still needs that, and if so, we'll do it at the next video. Uh, I, I could tell just from looking at Andrew's uh, stores uh, that there's some things readily identifiable that I can help him with, uh, which is all the more important based on his next sentence because he says, all three stores are struggling a bit with sales, and I'm not sure why? I feel like my prices are really low, which is a good thing if true. And for the most part, for the items that I looked at, he's selling his, his prices are quite low uh, or they're higher, but consistent with comps. Now I can't say that for every item. I didn't literally look every single one up, but I did notice that uh, in general. And so that's that's good uh, because a main problem that I've seen with many of the store reviews that I've done is people either haven't checked comps uh, or they just did it really briefly and so they wind up having a price for something that's just not realistic in terms of being uh, it's it's just not consistent uh, with the with the current marketplace so that's why uh, they're having slow sales or at least it's a main reason uh, that doesn't seem to be the case uh, here so he says, I've turned on promoted listings on all of my items, made sales, input item descriptions, but very little movement. And I'm just going to stop there for one second because just a little tip on promoted listings is that I would not put them on all of your items because there's going to be a certain percentage of your items that are going to sell within that first 30 day period. And if you turned on automatically, like right off the bat, like from day one, just turned on promoted for every single one, then if you have, let's say, hundreds to thousands of items in your store, you're going to be spending a significant uh, percentage of your, of your profit on promoted listing fees. And you don't want to do that if you don't have to. So want to try to avoid that. So I would use it in a very, if you're, if you're going to use it at all, because some people don't even believe in using it, but if you're going to use it like I do, use it in very specific targeted instances where you have a problem with view count, assuming that the main problem is not so much pricing. So you always have to make sure your pricing is good. And if you're getting tons of views on items that are you know, priced a little high and you know they're priced high and you just want to lower that a little bit, focus on that. Just focus on being patient and lowering that item price a little bit over time rather than putting in, you know, a 5 to 10% or something promoted listing charge because, again, that's just going to be unnecessary money you're going to wind up losing. Uh, so just, just keep that in mind. Um, but anyway, back to your message. It says, I always try to keep my 100% positive feedback. I have thousands of items yet to be listed. You could critique any of these stores or all if you prefer as they are all struggling. I appreciate your help and can't wait to see the video. If you need anything else, just let me know. Okay, so let's go and check out the store. 
And uh, this is the store right here. It's called Inland Empire Electronics. Now, for those of you who watched my prior videos, you know what I'm going to say, because I like to start off by doing a little discussion on uh, branding. And something really interesting here is that if you go and you look at Andrew's store, what we see here, and compare it to his username screen, you're going to see something very different. So check this out. So this is a store. And you could tell that, by the way, because it, it even says in the URL, STR for store. But now let's go to his, his username. And by the way, start off on a positive. Uh, I like, Andrew, that you have what was something I always suggest is to keep your username the same as your store name or at least as close as possible. And they are the same. So good job there. Um, but let's go over if we were to click this username. But I already have the tab open. What do you notice? You notice that for the username page, we have a really nice professionally done graphic. I like the colors. Uh, again, talking about some more positive stuff here. Uh, the logo is cool. It you know, looks like um, you know electronic circuit, and that obviously relates to the business name, so that's very good for, for branding. So great job. Here's my suggestion, though. Take this and apply it to your store. You have a store that is very specific. You're a niche store. You're on electronics. That's your focus. So if we scroll down real quick, and we'll go into some specifics in a few uh, minutes, but you can see this is, I know I'm going fast. I'll go a little slower, but it's all electronic stuff. It's all electronics. So the people you know who are coming to you are going to be electronics-focused folks, and this would be an area where you would have opportunity for repeat customers. You have electronics in your store name, so you want people to think, hey, I need electronics, I go to Inland Empire. That's where I'm going to get my electronic stuff from. But you want to leave people some way to remember you more by. Now, the store name is good, but I want to see that right there up front. I want to see this as Inland Empire Electronics in a professional banner. Remember, you want to convey a professional appearance to your customers from the outset. So that logo should be transferred over here. And you do have a logo here, which is good, but the problem is, is it's faded and it's smushed. So you've got to get those dimensions right and, uh, and, and rework that over there. By the way, good job as well for uh, being, I think, the first person whose store that I reviewed who actually has categories fleshed out and has them alphabetical. So that is great. Good job because it makes it much easier to find when it's alphabetical. So, so, so good job with that. Um, I would try to shorten this uh, descriptive phrase here a little bit uh, more. Um, you know, I don't think you need to have Inland Empire Electronics there again because it's such a long word. Um, but, you know, you could say something like um, focuses on a wide range of computer equipment, servers, networking, you know, and maybe a couple other things and try to fit it on one line if you can. If you absolutely need to go on a second line, that's fine. But I think one clear line of text is the best thing to try to do. Another thing that I would suggest is separate the words Inland Empire Electronics because if you go over here, you could see that they're separated, Inland Empire Electronics. And some sometimes people think that they need to have it that way uh, for the store for some reason, but you don't. Yes, you have to have it that way for your username, but not here. If you want to see with my own store uh, right here, um, and by the way, I have the link to my own store down in the description section. I'm also going to link Andrew's two stores in the description section if you want to check those out uh, as well. But, uh, you know, you can see here, you can separate it. So separate it because it makes it easier to read uh, for the customer. And uh, the other thing I would uh, say about the uh, store is that I would take out, I mentioned this in my prior video, I believe, the prior store review, take out the word resells. Yes, we're resellers. Yes, we should be proud that we're resellers. But you should understand that there is a percentage of your customer base who is not going to want to know that, like at least explicitly. They might make assumptions about that, but they it might be a subtle assumption they might not be like you know that might not be really conscious you know for them to be really thinking that but if you put it right out there that it's resold stuff people start to think and wonder hmm 
you know, does this stuff really work? Is there, you know, is there problems with it? Where did this person get it from? You know, they just start to think all these things. I would just take it out. There's, there's really no value in terms of putting that in there. Just focus on what you sell and leave it at that. Uh, so you've got a lot of uh, items here. I mean, uh, I guess a lot is relative, but you know, you've got, you're in the hundreds. You got 209 uh, nine items there. Uh, so you got a bunch of stuff that flesh out into all those different categories. But I'm going to tell you what I think the big problem is. So let me scroll down. And I know it's minimized, but hopefully people could see what I'm talking about here. We're just going to see what is the theme, what is the problem. It has to do, obviously, with something visual. What is the issue? I'm going to open one of these up so folks could see a little bit more. Uh, in fact, I think I actually have it open over here. Uh, nope, that's different. That's a different one. So let's let's actually get this one open. Okay, so this one is yours. Okay, now let me make the screen bigger. Okay, try to focus. Try to bring this up a little more. Try and enhance it. Try to magnify it if I can. There we go. Um, here's the problem. This item and many of the other items that you are selling are put on dirty sheets and sometimes dirty sheets with lumps in them or big creases as you can see behind here that is an issue let me make it a little bit bigger so we could see you see all that dirt right there it looks like grease and then back here uh, we've got some uh, We've got some of these big creases here. And in fact, there's like some random red thing back there. Like, I don't even know what that is. Is that a cherry? Is that a ball? I, I have no idea what that is, but it shouldn't be in the picture. Uh, or, oh, you know what it probably is? Maybe it's a tack. Are you tacking, trying to tack that down somehow to like keep it pinned down? I don't know. Like maybe that's the top of like a one of those thumbtacks or something, like a push tack. I don't know. But it shouldn't be in the picture. Now, I see what you're trying to do. You're trying to create a white background, which is good. So, like, the intent is there. The intent is good to do that. It's just not um, It's just not executed properly. And I don't say that in an insulting way. I just say that in a way to try to be, to, to be helpful, okay? And, and I'll show you an example of how it, it can be done. I kind of gave you a sneak peek of it a second ago. Um, but if we move over here, by the way, you'll also notice that there's, like, a black part of the of the screen you like see right here like there's something like it looks like a leg of something it's like standing on top of it maybe it's um you know it's a case or a shelf or something like that you want to i mentioned this in the review of neutron bomb stuff you want to make sure you clear out all this distracting stuff that stuff should not be there your item should really be what is the focus now good thing is that you do have it plugged on and you could see it's lit up and you're showing the functionality of it that it's working andrew so that is that is a good thing i try to mix in some positives with some of the um, uh, critiques um but this dirty sheet is an issue. So let's take a look at one of your competitors right now. And you tell me, and just try to detach yourself from the situation a bit, Andrew, that, that this one over here is yours, okay? And then look at this one. And you tell me if you try to think of yourself as the buyer. I always recommend people do this. Think of yourself as the buyer. What If you were the buyer, which one would you want to buy? Would you want to buy this one with this nice white background here? There's a nice, crisp, clear white background. And if we click on it, we'll see some other angles that were taken. Look at that. He's got the back here. He's got some zoom-ups of sockets, which people like to see, of different inputs. All that stuff is great, different angles. Now, it's not that Andrew didn't try to do that. Uh, he did. Uh, he's got other... Uh, angles that uh, show up as well he's showing different sides which is good you know showing multiple uh pictures so there we've got one there um, but you can see here we still have this trail of grease in here why is this a problem this is a problem because there are a lot of customers who are going to get the impression that things are just too dirty around there and it's just not it's it's especially for things that are more expensive okay I've, I said this in a prior video, but if you want to sell things at higher price ranges consistently and faster, you need to take the time to present them cons in a way that's consistent with the dollar amount that you want to get. 
I would still say you should do this stuff for lower priced items too, but definitely for the higher priced items. Like you can see here, it just looks like a bunch of, um, you know, just a bunch of like, you know, dirt prints that are just, you know, just all over the place there. So um, we want to definitely try to avoid that. So what you want to do is you want to, what I would suggest is look at what your competition is doing. What are you going up against? And this is one of your competitors. Now, this you have this item for $40. This person has it for $40 plus $13.99 uh, shipping. Uh, but especially if this person goes and sponsors this and uh, a customer sees it before yours, um, you know, this could be an issue where this person winds up making this sale. Now, it's not that, don't get me wrong, Andrew, it's not that you can't make sales putting the items like this. You can make sales, and I'm sure you have made sales on sheets that look just like this. But the problem is the sales are going to be slow. What I'm telling you, and I pretty much guarantee you this, that if you change the pictures so that they look more professional, crisp, and clear like this, that it is going to increase the chances that you are going to make that sale. And you are going to have faster sales. It's really just that simple. I mean, that is just a major component. I'm not saying it's the only thing, but it definitely is a big thing. Now, does it always have to be a white background? No, not necessarily. It doesn't. Um, wood backgrounds can work good too. Uh, so I like to use those sometimes. So, so you could do that. Um, just try to keep the base as solid as possible and as consistent as possible. But you could see even here, you know, this doesn't look as good as, uh, well, it's okay when you enlarge it like that. But having it to look like it's floating in the white space is great. I've talked about photo views as a um, as an, as one of the ones that uh, I like to use in terms of an app for white backgrounds. eBay has one as well. Uh, and there's other apps out there that uh, that work as well to do white backgrounds. You can just search around, just look in the Facebook groups and, and they'll tell you. But uh, um, the sheet is an issue, okay? Now, it's not just on that one item that I showed. If you go back and you look at the store, I could click on a lot of uh, uh, different items where we're going to have this uh, problem come up with regards to this dirty sheet. Now, sometimes the sheet's not a dirty. Sometimes it's just that there's like a bunch of lumps in, and creases in the sheets. And sometimes that could just be unsightly. Like this one here has got like a little bit of dirt in the front, but the item is covering uh, most of it. But you still have this like you know, this like wavy crease coming across the front of it. And it's just unsightly for people. That's the thing to keep in mind. It's unsightly. So you want it to, the, the thing is symmetry. You want things to look nice and crisp and clear. Now that doesn't mean, by the way, that you can't ever find a way to use uh, sheets in your background in some way. You can, but it depends. You've got to use them creatively. In fact, if you go to my store review, you'll see, if you remember when I reviewed Amanda's store, it could work in certain situations. Like, But here is like a patterned uh, linen uh, that she, you know, she seems to have like some linen sheets there. And uh, it works good with selling like fashion pieces like that. Like that, it makes sense. Someone laying on a bed. So you could use sheets strategically to sell certain types of items. Um, but uh, you know, in this type of situation, I would avoid the sheets. I would try to get something like um, some type of a whiteboard situation where you've got um, like just nice flat white boards. You could either get uh, the trifold boards uh, out at uh, like a dollar store. You could even get them for a buck a piece. Um, you could go out, get big pieces of uh, oak tag that you hang. Uh, some people will get big, big giant white sheets of paper that they will hang. Some people will get, um, you know, just big uh, lighting uh, stations with, um, you know, like a big giant light box that they could put things in. Uh, so the point is, is that all these things that I'm mentioning don't really crease. I mean, yeah, you could get some creases in the paper, but when you pull down a fresh roll, a fresh sheet, you're not going to have creases in that paper. So um, if you're going to use sheets in some way, then you've got to use clean sheets and you've got to make sure that they are taut. In other words, that they're that they're they're pulled as such that you have no creases on them. So you know, it's not like they, they can't possibly work, but they're not going to work really uh, in this way. So that that's an issue. Let's um, let me go on to a different uh, item. So here's another item of yours. And. This one here, we have a similar issue. 
in which we have uh, the dirt on the sheets and we've got the uh, the creases here. Okay, now let's take a look at, uh, and this is gonna, I, I think, just kind of get the point across. I'm gonna do now, rather than look at one of your current competitors, or you could go do that if you want to, but I'm gonna show you some completed sales data on this exact item. Okay, now let's go to the top one. So the top one that sold, look at that. We've got a nice, clear, front-facing shot. Now it's not a pure white background on this one, uh, but it, there's a white base to it, and you can see that it's uh, it's pretty solid down there. Okay, we don't have any. It looks like it's like a counter, and that could work too. Um, I personally would have gotten rid of some of that distracting stuff in the background, but even though there's a little bit of distracting stuff back there, the main thing that is still grabbing your attention is the front face of this unit. Now you have this piece so selling for, or you're trying to sell it for $69.99. So this person sold it for $59.99, $35.50 uh, shipping. Now look, another problem here, Andrew, is that you see how your item is so, actually, let me take the zoom off. You see how distant it is? It's distant. It's not like in your face. You have to keep in mind that there's people going through the thumbnails on their phone and they're going to go right by that. They're going to go right by that and a lot of your other items that look like that as well where they're pushed back into the background. So that's a big problem. You want to make sure you're taking up most of the screen with that initial image. So for people, for example, who sell shirts and there's like a particular logo on the shirt you want to highlight or even if you're selling postcards and there's something on the postcard that looks really cool. Sometimes you might just want to zoom in on that part and make that the main focus of your thumbnail and then people could go in and see the more expanded version of it uh, later on. So that's a big issue um, and you want to try to address that. Uh, let's go and we'll uh, scroll down some more and look at other ones that sold. This is just ones that sold by the way. I just This one I actually just clicked the sold ones. I'm not counting in um, completed ones but let's look this is sorted from highest to lowest price though okay you can see here highest to lowest go down go down go down and what do we notice here this is this, this is um this one is this, these are some different ones these are results matching uh, fewer words we're just going to stick with the ones that are clear matches for you so that brings us a total of one two three four five uh, no actually four one, two, three, four. What's the one that sold for the lowest price? This one right here. And what do we notice is in the background on this one? You got it. We've got creased and lumpy sheets. Now the image is not showing up on this one, but let me backtrack and you'll be able to see it right over here in this image. Okay, just you could see it probably right there. They're right back there. But the ones above it, this is a nice white background. It's cropped out. This one here, there's some distracting stuff around it and some glare. Um, but again, you still see the front face of the unit is the main thing that's showing up in the picture there. And uh, all those things sold for higher than the one with the crease sheets in it. So uh, that, uh, again, is, um, you know, is, is an issue. And I think that if you fix that, that that is going to make a major, major difference in your sales. What I would do, since it's a big project, if you buy into this, is that for anyone's going forward, uh, I would have a, um, a different uh, a background set up so it's nice and clear and crisp and white. And then either when something doesn't sell and you've got to put it up again, start taking some new pictures of those items. And, um, you know, Start with the ones maybe that are the most expensive ones. And the key is to just try to eventually over time replace them. Don't try to go in and replace all 209 at once and do all 209 photos at once. You're going to get overwhelmed if you do that. I don't recommend that at all. Just slowly try to improve it. Get the new ones up good. Get everything nice and zoomed in. Nice, cool, front-facing shots so you could really see what the item is from the thumbnail you don't have to squint you don't have to have any kind of difficulty trying to see what it is and get rid of those crease sheets so also try to have a consistent theme when someone's looking through your store like 
you know, it's kind of a strange experience when you're when you're going through here. Remember I talked about symmetry is that you're going through and I see these white backgrounds with these sheets and then all of a sudden I come across like one of these things on a red background. And I'm like, why is this on a red background? It kind of disrupts the flow of looking through things. It kind of breaks it up. Um, and, you know, I, I think you want a more crisp viewing experience for your customers when they're going through. So I would suggest uh, trying to work on that. Like, you know, if you go down to my store, for example, you know, over here, you can see as you're going down, you just see a very similar kind of visual uh, design um, uh, setup. You know, these are a lot of posters and stuff. And, and sometimes I like to use a wood grain background. Again, you don't always have to use white, uh, but it's a consistent kind of feel, a consistent kind of view that people are getting as they're going uh, through the store. So that's another suggestion for you. Now, let me go over to your other store. And it's this one here where you're focused on vacuum tubes. Now you have 802 vacuum tubes uh, listed. Now, my opinion, although I understand different people have a different take on this, I don't think that you need to have a separate vacuum tube central store. You're paying two different sets of store fees. You could put everything all in one store. After all, think about it. They are still electronic devices. I would just put all this stuff under one big tab uh, in, your, in your other store and just have a tab that says, you know, vacuum tubes or radio tubes or whatever, you know, just, just have one there that just has that. And that's where all these things, you know, just, just get put into that specific area. Um, you know, I understand why you would think, hey, you know, I've got a thousand of these things to list, so I'm gonna make a whole separate store for it. But, you know, I don't think that's really that important for folks. Is, is, and, you know, there's no branding associated with it. There's no logos associated with it or anything like that. Um, so something to consider, just put it within, um, you know, within the other store. Uh, but why are you, that's not why you're having an issue selling these things. Why are you having an issue selling these things? Um, it's, I think a big part of reason again, gets down to the visual display. So if we look here, I literally would have to tilt my head to try to see exactly what this is. And these things are like, they're tilted to the side. Some of them are upside down. I can't read them easily. Sometimes they're, the, the font is uh, just uh, faced in the complete opposite direction. Now, you might have photographed these properly, but what happened is when you downloaded them or when you maybe you're listing from your phone, I don't know, but they're not being rotated properly. So at the, at the very least, they need to be rotated properly. But you also notice that um, there's, again, a dissimilar theme that's running through the store in, in the sense that the backgrounds are all really different. Like here we've got, and it could partly be a lighting issue, but even so, like here in this one, you know, you've got, um, you know, this wood table here and you could see the rim of the table, uh, you know, showing. But then, you know, on this one over here, we've got, sorry, I back clicked twice by accident. Um, you know, we've got some solid wood grains where we don't see any rim uh, of the table. And some of them, it's, you know, different coloring. Like this one looks more of like a reddish one. This one's more of a brown one. Like give people a consistent theme. Some of them have really, you know, significant light glare that's coming through. Some of them have chipped pieces of wood in it. Like, you know, give people a consistent theme when they're looking. And let's look at your uh, competitors in terms of like what they're doing. And it's always a good suggestion. Look at your competitors, see what they're doing. Not only your competitors for, you know, currently who have items on the market, but also look at what your competitors have done in the past for completed sales that they've done. Look at ones that actually went through. See if you could pick out any themes and that can help you kind of structure and design your own listings. So if we look at this one here, the GE6BL8, this one right here, you know, when I click on it and I look at ones that have uh, been completed, uh, what I notice is that, um, first of all, it's easier to see what they are. Like they're, it's zoomed in on it a little bit more. Uh, and, um, you know, there's, there's not any kind of, um, uh, you know, 
issue with them being like tucked away in the background or with them being like significantly reversed. I mean, they're long tubes. Uh, so, you know, I understand how you got to kind of lay them out this way. And in, in some sense, you'd have to kind of turn your head a little bit to see it. But I wouldn't put them on like, um, you know, on slants like in this way where it's like completely opposite of the viewer um, or completely upside down. Uh, I get you might turn them to the side, for example, but having them completely reversed is, is uh, you know, is an issue. Uh, in addition to that, if we look at currently how people are, are listing some of these, take a look at what they're doing. Again, they're trying to fill up the whole screen or, or a large part of the screen with the item. In terms of a whole screen fill up, I'll move down a little bit more. And uh, I think you'll see some of that down here. Hold on, let me get down a little bit more. Where is it? Uh, that might be on this page over here because I know I saw it. Where is it? Down here more. Um, where'd it go? I know it's here somewhere. I saw it before. Um, there were some people who were showing the actual... Uh, here we go. Right over here. There were some people who were showing the side uh, and just using the side of one of the boxes as their... Uh, with a model number on it to be the main thing that the person sees when they're going through the thumbnail. You could do that, Andrew, with a lot of the uh, tubes that you have listed. You could just do that. And that one, you could have a nice white background on. Uh, and then what happens is someone just clicks on the, on the vacuum tube like that. They say, oh, that's the one that I want. That's the model that I need. They click on it. And then, you know, they go down and then... They could click over here if they want to get another close-up of it. And you could put, you know, your other pictures of it. You could put the whole picture of the lawn box. I would have put a couple more pictures in besides what this person did. But the point is, is what this person is doing is this person is grabbing attention from the customer and bringing them into the store to make the sale. Remember, you've got to get the customer to walk in that front door. And the analogy to getting them to work in the walk into the front door on eBay is you've got to get them to click on your listing as they're scrolling through. And unfortunately, I just think that with both of the stores, with items being turned in a, in a different orientation uh, and with items being uh, tucked or faded away in the background, more so that being an issue with the other store than this one. And then, you know, again, the issue with the sheets and the, um, you know, uh, the you know the the dirt on them. I mean, all those things combined, I think, is the main issue because it's obviously not the price, especially with these tubes. You know, nine ninety nine tubes. Um, you know, people will buy tubes for nine ninety nine. Now, keep in mind, people also like to look for tubes in lots. Um, so sometimes, if there are ones that are not known to be good sellers individually, what I would just do with those, Andrew, is I would take those ones that are not good sellers, put them into lots, and rather than having 800 different listings, which by the way, you're going to collect fees on eventually, um, I would just take the ones that are not selling well or don't have good comps data on that they're selling well and just put them in a lot, sell them off that way, um, and keep the higher priced ones up for sale. Again, consider taking this store just even down and just integrating it all into one store. It's always easier to manage one store uh, than to manage two. Uh, so, you know, if you can, if it makes sense, you know, if it's something that totally unrelated to your first store, I could get how there could be more of a reason to maybe do it and make a separation. But again, vacuum tube, vacuum tube central would seem to fit in very well with, um, with inland empire electronics. So overall, that's uh, my tips for you, Andrew. I hope that they help you out. Uh, it's mostly uh, photo related, really. Um, some branding, some logo suggestions, and um, hopefully this is helpful for other people who watch this uh, as well. So uh, with that being said, I'm going to wrap up. And uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, come to the Facebook group, Facebook Reselling Resource Center. The links to that is down below, as well as to uh, other uh, seller resources, such as shipping supplies, things like that. Those are affiliate links that help support the channel uh, if you do... Um, you know, if you want to see some of the things that I uh, use in my own business, uh, make sure you come to my Instagram account. That is at prime underscore time underscore treasure. I'll see you all back in the next video, everyone. Take care.